Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweater Nature? In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how end screen retouching using frequency separation from the very start to the very end. And if at all you're a beginner, simply like this, this video. And if at all you have always had issues regarding learn, learning frequency separation, simply hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. So, this is the image that we're going to be using for this kind of tutorial. And before we proceed, remember frequency separation divides this image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer in the high frequency layer we have the textures and in the low frequency layer we have the colors so apart from the background layer, we're just going to come and press ctrl j on the keyboard twice or you can use command j twice and you can double click rename that to low and you can name the up layer to high frequency like i said the low frequency layer is for colors and the high frequency layer is for textures so as you have named these layers simply come and select your low frequency layer and click on the visibility icon to hide it and after doing that come and make sure the low frequency layer has been selected right here then you're going to come to filter blur and come down to gaussian blur right here so when you come to gaussian blur we have to determine the amount of skin details that we want to eliminate from the image so you can zoom into the image by using ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can click right here and you look for an area that has more skin textures than the rest of the skin so this area has more skin textures so the point for this remember this is the most important step when it comes to editing using frequency separation the reason for choosing this is because we want to blur away the prominent textures and as soon as they are blurred away we can simply remain with a color or the colors in the photo so just going to come and simply take up the radius so you left click and hold down and you can simply drag as you're releasing to see the effect happening in real time so i'll just take that up a little so at about six that is when i'm just starting to close out on the details so you have to stop at the point when you just start to close out on the details or the textures in the image so yours may be different from mine right here so i'll just come and simply click ok then come the high frequency and now select it and now come and activate it right there and after doing that just come right here to image and come down to apply image so when it comes to this step you have to understand the bit depth of your image so mine is a 16-bit image but if i told you working with an 8-bit image i'll be showing you the settings for that later on in this tutorial so just come and select the low frequency layer and make sure rgb is selected and make sure for a 16-bit image if i told you have 16 right here for your image just come and change the blend mode the blend mode rather to add the scale is to offset zero or pass at 100 percent reserve transparency and mask are not checked and make sure you turn on the invert option and make sure the preview the preview is on and you can see that we have the textures on this gray layer which is lacking the colors then if at all you're working with an 8-bit image just come and simply change this to subtract make sure the invert option is not turned on the scale has to be 20 offset 128 so just type in these values and make sure the invert option is not turned on and you have the same results so mine is a 16-bit image so i'll change it back to add invert and the scale is to offset zero and i'll come and hit ok so after doing that just come the blend mode and change it from normal and change it all the way down to linear light and you can start to get back the image the way it was meant to be initially before so i'm going to put these two layers in a group by pressing down ctrl and selecting or clicking on both layers and pressing ctrl g on the keyboard or you can press command g on the keyboard put these two in a group and you can rename that group if at all you want so if at all we want to edit remember frequency separation we have to perfect the colors alone and we also have to perfect the textures alone so the very first step for frequency separation is perfecting the colors or the skin tone transitions in the photo that you're trying to work on so I'll just come and hide the texture layer by clicking on the eye icon right here and select the color layer or the low frequency layer. And after selecting, just come to the brushes and right click and look for a mixer brush tool. And if I told it is lacking right there, simply right click here and you'll find your mixer brush tool among here. So after that, whichever tool you are working with in Photoshop, the settings are always going to be on top here. So make sure to use these settings the hardness is zero percent and make sure clean brush is selected make sure the option that says clean the brush after each other stroke has been selected this second option 
because as we're working on the skin, we're working on different colors on the skin area, and we don't want the brush to carry color from one area to another. That is why we select this area. The weight is 9% because we don't want the brush to spill color from one area to another. Load of 75, mix 90, and the flow of 100%. Make sure sample all layers is not turned on. And when you're done setting the Mr. Brush tool, you can increase or decrease on the size of the Mr. Brush tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard. So you can see that. And if I told the Mr. Brush tool is showing a plus icon, simply make sure that you press the caps key on the keyboard. So after doing that, we are now done setting the Mr. Brush tool. And right now it is time to start applying it. So in order to apply the Mr. Brush tool onto a skin, make sure the size of the Mr. Brush tool is slightly within the area that you're trying to work on. And how to apply the Mr. Brush tool, you simply left click and hold down and simply move the brush in the direction of the area you're trying to work on. And you mix that color that is existing within that area, just like that. I hope you can see that then come and mix like that and where these colors are transitioning from one to another reduce on the size and make sure you mix and blend that area right there just like that i hope you can see the effect in real time and as we're using this technique for hiding the high frequency like you can notice that the image tends to look a little bit plastic but remember we are perfecting the colors and don't mind about the image looking a little bit plastic at this step of this tutorial so just mix like that and make sure the brush is within the range or the area you're trying to work on so after working in that area we are going to work on the rest of the skin and you can see a cheek area is moving in in this kind of direction and i have to move my brush in this kind of direction and the other thing when you're using a mr brush tool make sure that you use it when the image is zoomed out because when you zoom out the image, you can see or identify the uneven skin tone transitions and you can work on them or identify them better at a distance. And it also helps you save time as you're trying to edit your photos. So I'm just going to be forwarding this and I'll see you later on in this video. Now welcome back and now you can see that we are done using the Mr. Brush tool and this is what we have. So just come and turn on the texture layer and let's see the quick before and after for our skin retouching. So this is the image before, after, before, after. After doing that, the next thing that we want to do is perfect the areas that we may have missed out when we are using the Mr. Brush tool. For example, the neck area and the rest of the areas are within this very image. So in order to perfect these areas, just come and simply get uh, the lasso tool and make sure it is in new selection mode make sure the feathering is 22 pixels and because we want smooth edges from the selection so just come and make a selection on only the skin area don't select the edges of the face and don't select the hair so just select the skin area and you can see the shape that we are making is following the shape of the face so just come right here to filter blur and come to gush and blur and with this done, it is going to bring back the radius that we had for our frequency separation. Just multiply that radius by 3. So mine was 6, so 6 by 3 is 18. I'll just type in 18. And you can see this makes the image look better and it makes it look a little bit more perfect. So ju just come and make a new selection and come to Gaussian Blind. If I totally feel the effect is too much, right click on the selection and it is going to bring up that option of fade Gaussian Blind. And you're going to be able to reduce on the opacity or the effect in that area so i'm just going to leave mine to the maximum so that you guys can see how amazing the results are going to be so i'm just going to do this on only the face so this step is just for only the face area so right now we are done working on the skin in the face and you can see this is the before after remember we are now done working on the colors and nothing is going to be perfecting or working on the textures by removing the pimples acne or blemishes so just come and select the high frequency layer and just come and select the clone sample tool so make sure the settings the hardness is at zero percent or percent the flat hundred percent make sure current layer is selected because we are working with the textures that are part of the current layer that has been selected in our group so just come and zoom into the image by pressing ctrl plus on the keyboard or you can use command plus on the keyboard and how to remove a blemish 
we are simply going to hold down the alternate key on the keyboard or the option key on the keyboard so hold it down yeah make sure the size is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to remove hold the hold down the alternate key on the keyboard or you can hold down the option key on the keyboard and left click on the clean area near the blemish and simply click over the blemish and that is going to eliminate the blemish so i'm just going to be doing this on the rest of the blemishes until i have a perfect looking image so take your time as you're trying to remove the blemishes and i'll forward this and i'll see you later on in this very video And now you can start you are now done removing the blemishes and you can say before after before after and let's do one final step for the screen retouching that is doing the eye whitening so just come and let me just go ahead and use the camera roll filter so just come and create a stamp visible by pressing shift alternate command e on the keyboard to create a screenshot for all stamp visible for this and just come to filter come to camera roll filter and you're going to come straight to our brushes right here and get this brush tool and make sure we are simply going to come the saturation of the brush and we desaturate it just like that to negative 76 and now zoom all the way into the image by pressing ctrl plus on the keyboard and you can reduce on the size of the brush by using uh, the bracket keys on the keyboard so we're just going to come and simply with the brush tool selected just come and paint on the eyes and you can see that is going to create this eye whitening effect so you can click or use the space but click and hover around to another area that you want to work on so you can see right now the image has been retouched and this looks perfect so just come and hit ok and now you can see the overall before and after for the image before after before after then after I simply export the image so that it doesn't cha change in color when you post it on social media or when you print it out. So simply come to file, export and come to export as. And after doing that, simply with the export as window simply selected, just come right at the format. And make sure it is set to JPEG and the quality at 100%. Make sure resample is set to by Cubic Sharper because one Photoshop to sharpen the image for us as you're trying to save it. And make sure embed color profile and convert srgb have been selected right here and when that is done simply come right here and simply hit on export and choose a de destination where you want to save the image and simply hit save and the image is going to be saved in that given area so this is it for this video and if at all you have enjoyed this simply like this video and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed to this channel ronis from ronis photography thank you for watching i've seen it more amazing story and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating